When I started out, um, I had a certain resistance to rewrites. Um, and it's important to understand that when you resist, it's because you're scared of it. What writing process do you teach your students? I try to teach my students, um, give them as many different tools as possible. Um, I don't believe in any dogmas. I don't believe there's one single way to do it. Um, when I teach, so for example, I have a, a whole class for a three hour class for structure and I give, the, give them all the approaches I know to structure, like the, you know, the save the cat approach to it, and the Blake Snyder approach to it, uh, the eight sequence um, structure. Whatever, it's whatever helps they find helpful to break, so it's not so daunting to break down story because um, we all feel it, you know, when, you, when you're facing the story, you're like, oh my God, I have so much ground to cover and I don't know. So for example, the eight sequence um, structure is really helpful because you're thinking in terms of 12, 15 pages at a time. Um, so you're, you know, you're writing shorts. I'm talking about features, of course. Um, it's like writing a short unit um, and then by thinking of units, you're not thinking about the whole thing. Um, with, um, with TV, well, TV, I mean, it, there is, there are multiple ways to do TV, but, um, you know, I do give them, I do compare TV structure with film structure in the sense that, um, a drama pilot, you know, the end of the teaser is usually the inciting incident, um, the end of act, um, one um, is where it kind of gets personal. So the, the end of act two would be the midpoint in a 60 minute, 55 minute um, pilot. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't believe there's one way to do things. I, whatever works for each person. Do you ever find students challenge that because they've they've read books before they've taken your class or they've taken other classes and they say well no this is actually how it's done and they like those rules they like structure uh, i do believe it's just, there should be structure i mean they don't usually question me because they understand that i'm i'm very straightforward from the beginning and i said look i'm, I'm going to give you um everything i know and sometimes you know there are different options but i'm no, I mean, they're adults, so I'm giving them an option. It's like, I'm not going to tell you there's one single way to do it. I'm going to tell you all the ways I found out over the years, and some of my colleagues prefer this version and others this one. And, um, you know, it's my, my role as, as an instructor is to give them tools, not to, to give them the ultimate truth, because there's no such thing. Actually, I would, I would say the most important thing... I don't know if you can teach people how to write. You can teach them discipline. You can encourage them. You can show them that it's not impossible. Um, you, you can share experience, you know, experiences that, that, that reveal that um, you can get frustrated and keep going. That you can have failures and get up. Um, it's amazing how many times everyone, including myself and everyone else, we tend to think that what happens to us is only happening to ourselves and it's ridiculous because uh, it's very um, liberating to hear that other people have gone through the same. Actually, you don't, you don't, you never get, you rarely get a chance, but if you, if you can read first drafts by acclaimed writers, which of course you'll never find because they don't want you to, but um, Academy Award writers, winning writers also have awful first drafts. They also have scripts that don't work. Um, you know, it's, it's not that they sit down and write the most perfect script ever. It takes many rewrites. So, I mean, I know Aaron Sorkin will go on and say, like, he wrote uh, The Social Network in three months. And I'm like, maybe. I don't know. You know, I'm sure he's very talented and smart and, and qualified. I'm saying, you know, we all need time to get there. Is that something that's hard for your students to accept or, or was that something for you in the beginning that you just wanted to get this idea out there, these characters out there, you didn't want to have to do multiple drafts? Um, you mean if, if they challenge the idea of, of, of rewrites? Sure, or did you yourself challenge it? Um, I, 
Well, when I started out, um, I had a certain resistance to rewrites. Um, and it's important to understand that when you resist, it's because you're scared of it. Uh, and I would say it is, it is scary because um, the first draft, once you understand that the first draft is not the final product, um, it's just your first approach to it. Um, then you understand that the rewrites is where it actually gets tricky. Um, and you know there, there are many um, ways to approach rewrites. Um, it took me a while to learn how to do it as well. I usually use the image. It's, it's like a wound. You know, it, it's a scar that you're reopening and being, being very dramatic here. But you know, you finish a draft and you're very pleased and you want to step back right and, and take some distance and then you go back to it and you have to reopen the wound and I'm like it's all bloody again and then you have to stitch it up again um i i, I think that's when you need perspective the most that's when you could use feedback from close people um conversations maybe even the help of a script doctor at some point why not um it's really hard to have perspective on your own writing Sometimes you need some time to go by, maybe weeks or a month before you dive in again. Um, and you need someone's perspective to know what works and what doesn't. And, and maybe you love a scene and that scene needs to go. And you need someone to tell you that scene needs to go. Um, the good thing about working for hire or working with, with, uh, with people is that they actually give you notes. Um, and I could spend hours talking about notes themselves and sometimes they'll give you the best notes and it hurts because you have to work a lot on them but they're good notes you can tell and sometimes you gotta find the note behind the note you know some you don't you can't expect people always to have the perfect note to give you but it's your job to find out what they mean um, and also I you know I try to be very careful when someone has one opinion Okay, I'll see if I consider it or not. But when one note keeps coming up over and over again in different manners, right? But it's the same note, well, then there's a problem, you know, right? When I, I, a script I, I have to rewrite now that I rewrote a couple of times, it's a period script. And um, a note I kept getting back was the main character is an asshole. Why do I care? And at first I resisted saying like, no, it's the 60s. That's how people did things back then. But then, you know, when I keep getting the same note, especially from female readers, they're like, no, that guy's an asshole. Well, then I have a problem because I'm not making a movie for the 60s. I'm making a movie for nowadays. So even though I'm trying to be very accurate in terms of how I portray the period, my audience is now. So I got to do something about it. So... You had to make the character somewhat more relatable and human to today's standards, not um, 60s. Well, I mean, he's a guy who's focused on on his work and is is um, disregarding his. He's very young. His wife is also very young, and they have a baby. So instead of being a good father, which he can't because he's like he's too young. He doesn't. Know, I mean, it's not like he means anything by it, he just doesn't know how to do it. So he escapes family, his family's responsibilities by focusing on his work. Um, and the note was, he's being an asshole. I'm like, no, well, he's a kid, you know, he doesn't know, he shouldn't have been a dad in the first place. It's the 60s, back in the 60s, you didn't share that responsibility. And they're like, no, I don't care. You know, I don't care how good he is at his job. She, he left her alone to raise a child. And, you know, there's really no point in me arguing that. What about Don Draper? Well, this is the thing. I, I, I love Mad Men and I love Don Draper and I use that as a reference. Don Draper only works for today's audiences because uh, John Hamm is really sexy. <laughs> okay, and, that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, I, I remember <laughs> back when it came out, I was watching it with my girlfriend at the time and I would say, you know, he's he's disgusting. He's he's an awful person. And she would be like, I don't care. He's too hot. And you know what? There's a point there. I don't know how that they got that that show made before casting. 
I think it took a while. Um, yeah, he's awful. He's a broken man, but he's John Hamm in a suit.